Good afternoon, Mr. Finknottle. Mr. Worcester is not at home, sir, but perhaps I can get you some refreshments. No. I don't want to see Bertie anyway. Jeeves. Yes, sir. It's about this wedding of mine, Jeeves. I've got the most fateful problem. I can't sleep at night thinking about it. Most distressing, sir. I'm frightened of Sir Watkin Bassett, Jeeves. Your prospective father-in-law, sir. And his friend, Roderick Spode, the amateur dictator. A week ago, I realized that I'd have to make a speech at the wedding breakfast. And that Roderick Spode and Sir Watkin Bassett would both be in the audience. Perhaps I can be of assistance, sir. that shot, you know, because a shot like that, you've got to get your wrists moving. Well, certainly. Mm. Yes. In fact, I'll show you in the notes later on, if you like. The earnings wasn't all that wonderful, Bertie. Oh, oh, well, better get a show them how it's done, I suppose. wasn't out. Oh, yes, it was, Stiffy. Caught of the wicket. Ah, uh, two leg, please, umpire. Well, I must say, Gussie's changed. Oh, yes. When did you last see him? Uh, well, apart from yesterday, I gave him dinner at the drones a couple of weeks ago. Didn't you notice a change in him then? Uh, no, I don't think so. But you know how it is when you're being a host, keeping your eye on the waiters, trying to head off cat's meat Potter Purbright from doing his imitation of Beatrice Lilly. He's changed, Bertie. Oh, yes, yes. He used to do Cicely Courtnage. I mean, Augustus. All right. <coughs> right here. Out. That birth, every citizen has of right, will be issued with a British bicycle and an honest British made umbrella. Thus assured of a mobile workforce adequately protected against the elements, this great country can go forward once more to glory. Hooray! Say, that's a jolly good idea. Citizens of Totley on the world, I say to you that nothing stands between us and our victory except defeat. Tomorrow is a new day. The future lies ahead. Sure, I'd never thought of that. That sort of thing really makes you think, does it, Jeeves? Indeed it does, Sam. Ah, Jeeves, glad to see you here. You're just the sort of person we need in the movement. <laughs> the working masses. I hesitate to contradict you, Mr. Spode, but the working masses and I have barely a nodding acquaintanceship. Good afternoon. <laughs> There's Uncle Watty over there. Now's the time for you to talk to him. What about? About us getting married, of course. Well, yes, but here... Yes, he was clapping every time you hit the ball. Was he? Harold wants to talk to you, Uncle Watkin. What? Oh, what is it, Mr Pinker? Well, sir, it's, it's about Stephanie. About Stephanie? Yes, sir. I mean... As you're her guardian, I thought, well, the fact is, uh, Sir Watkin, we want to get married. Married? You and Stephanie? Oh, no, 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 no. Quite out of the question. You're the curate, aren't you? Yes, sir. 
You can't afford a wife, man. Well, sir, Stephanie seems willing to give it a try. That's what guardians are for, young man. To protect their wards from trial and error. <laughs> oh, well played. Well played. You were absolutely hopeless. It didn't give me a chance to speak. That was a no ball. I am talking to you, Constable Oates. <laughs> was you addressing me, miss? Yes, I was, Constable Oates. That ball you got Mr. Pinker out with was a no ball. Well, miss, why was that? Because it was. Let me say this to you, miss. I got my eye on certain people. Certain people with dogs. If you really loved me, you'd do something about that man. What do you mean, do something? Steal his helmet. He'd look a complete fool walking around the village without his helmet on. I can't go around stealing policemen's helmets. He insulted me. Oh, no, no, I don't think he meant anything. If you can't even do a simple thing like stealing a policeman's helmet for me, well, then I agree with my uncle about you. You'll never be a bishop. The standard of umpiring in village cricket nowadays is really very poor. Stop the car, Bertie. Oi! Look here, Spurge, will you keep this rabble of yours out of the way of the traffic? How dare you! This highly trained force has far more right to the road than you. Oh, don't talk rot, Spurge. I am not in the habit of talking rot. Well, I must say, you're doing dashed well for a beginner. Drive on, Bertie. Clear the road! Gussie, I don't know how to put this, but you've changed. Uh -huh. You can imagine what it was like for me to contemplate getting up to make a speech with Roderick Spode on one side of me and Watkin Bassett on the other. Well, Roderick Spode has loved Madeline since she was, well, so high. Oh, yes. Yeah, but he doesn't want to marry her, you see. He looks upon himself as a man of destiny and feels that marriage would interfere with his mission. What do you mean, his mission? Well, that fascist crew we saw just now. The black shorts. He's the founder. Anyway, yesterday, I placed my problem before Jeeves. That man is a marvel, Bertie. Well, what did you advise, Jeeves? I approached the matter from a psychological angle, so it occurred to me that we do not fear those whom we despise. The tactic, therefore, is to cultivate a lofty contempt for those who are about to listen to one. Yes, but how? Quite simply, sir, one fills one's mind with scornful thoughts of them. Uh, one must never cease to remind oneself uh, that we once saw Robinson arraigned before magistrates for travelling first class on a second class ticket, and so on, sir. Robinson will have lost his sting. You dominate him. Sounds all very well in theory, geez, but does it work in practice, one asks oneself? Like a dream! You saw me just now with Spode! The moment Jeeves spoke those words, I settled down to think of all the things about Roderick Spode and Sir Watkin Bassett, which exposed them to the just contempt of their fellow men. Like the fact that Spode's moustache looks as if someone's just squashed a fly on his upper lip. No, in fact, Jeeves, I went one better. Indeed, sir? Yep. Yeah. Just so I wouldn't forget anything, I wrote it all down in a notebook. You wrote it down, sir? Yeah, in a little notebook. Where do you keep it? In my back pocket. Here it is. Ooh, must have dropped it somewhere. Dropped it? D yes, but it's all right. I can remember every word. Oh, uh, good stuff, is it? Oh, the best. Good, good. No chance of Spoon or Bassett being bored when they read it. <laughs> no, I...
No. No, 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 Gussie, stop. I've got to get that. When's the next Calm time? down. Think, Gussie. Is there anywhere you may have dropped it? I can't think. How can I think? Is there anywhere you may have dropped it? No. Oh. Well, I had it in my trouser pocket when I was playing tennis this morning. Who are you playing with? Uh, Stephanie. We need more chairs, Butterfield. There are 400 guests, women. Yes. Move those tables to the corner and fetch the plane up to the stable. Also, Stiffy. Oh. Hello, Bertie. Isn't it exciting? Oh, yes, indeed, yes. Ah, uh, Stiffy. Have you by any chance got a, uh, a small leather-covered notebook that Gussie might have dropped this morning? The one full of the excellent character studies of Roderick Spode and my guardian. That's a chair. Yes, yes, I've got it. Oh, you have. Gosh, what a relief. Well, I'll, uh... I'll sort of take it, as it were, if you don't mind. What do you want it for? Well, I want it because Gussie might easily lose it again. And then uh, it might fall into the hands of your uncle, in which event he would certainly kick the stuffing out of the Gussie-Madeline wedding arrangements. And then Madeline might, well, get ideas once again about marrying yours truly. <laughs> you know, Bertie, I'm sure your man Jeeves could think of some way of getting Uncle Watkin to approve of Harold. One wishes you all the luck in the world and all that in that department, but I, I don't quite see what. And then I could give you back the note. Stiffy, are you trying to blackmail me? Yes. Excuse me, Patty. Come along. You should have finished that by now. You still haven't built the rock. There must be some way of getting Stiffy and Stinker under starter's orders without old Sir Watkin registering an objection. Sir Watkin is not a man easily persuaded, sir. Yeah. What is it, Jeeves? Uh, there are some curious objects in the wardrobe, sir. Curious objects? They're handkerchiefs, Jeeves. Handkerchiefs. Uh, I think not, sir. They appear to have writing on them. Oh, come now, Jeeves. I bought a couple of dozen of them the other day and they offered to put my initials on. See, BWW. I see, sir. With what purpose in mind, sir? Well, I just think they look dashed smart. Do you, sir? Yes, Jeeves, I do. Anyway, to return to the problem at hand, I told Gussie that Stiffy wouldn't give his notebook back and he got a sort of a wild look in his eye. I'm only worried that he might do something rash and upset the apple cart. Gussie. I've brought you a newt. A uh, newt? I thought you might like one. You'd better come in. They make wonderful pets. Really? Bertie says you won't give him my notebook. He knows what he's got to do. I need it, Stephanie. So what can get so much? Jolly hard luck. I better know where it is. But, thank you for the newt, Gussie. It, Stephanie. Well, you can't. Gussie, stop it! I'm sorry, Stephanie. It means a lot to me. I ah! must have it, Stephanie. Gussie! Madeline! Ah! Madeline! I just came to give Stephanie a nude. Ah! Shall I lay out one of your novelty handkerchiefs for you today, sir? Oh, come off it, Jeeves. Everyone wears things with initials on them nowadays. I thought practice was restricted to those who are in danger of forgetting their names, sir. You know, Jeeves, there was a very odd atmosphere at dinner last night. Perhaps best described as dour. I was never under the impression that Totley Towers had a reputation for prandial jocundity, sir. Eh? Well, true, Jeeves, true. But the atmosphere was even less than usually jocund. Mr. Finknottle was presumably worrying about his notebook, sir. Mr. Finknottle did not turn up for dinner at all, Jeeves. Indeed, sir. And Roderick Spode didn't look too happy either. Now I have grisly premonitions about Spode, Jeeves. The trouble is, I've forgotten that jolly useful word you unearthed for me. Sir? And the one about uh, some scandal in Spode's past that always reduces him to a quivering mass of apology. I have a feeling I may need it. You are referring, I think, sir, to Eulily. Eulily, that's it, yes. I wish you could tell me what the word meant, Jeeves. I mean, I've, I've no complaints. It's undoubtedly been successful in the past, but it's, it's rather like holding up a bank and not knowing whether your gun is loaded or not. I fear I am not at liberty to elucidate, sir. Uh, you may rest assured, however, that the weapon is loaded. Uh, the other really odd thing about last night was, was Madeline's attitude. Her eyes were distinctly swivelling in my direction, and 
She said she wants to meet me in the library this morning. But I think I wish I was dead. It's all over. What is? Me and Madeline, we're finished. What? What have you been doing to her? It wasn't me, it was her. You know you told me Stephanie wouldn't give up the notebook. Yes? Well, I took her a newt. You took her a newt? I thought it might soften her up. You thought a newt might soften her up? Yes. It didn't, though. Anyway, I was struggling with her on the bed, and then the, the door... Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Madeline came in. That's the whole story. I want to tell you that my engagement to Augustus is at an end. Oh, right. Yes, well, he told me. Mm. I am now free to make you happy. I will be your wife, Bertie. Ah, oh, good heavens. Well, uh, deeply sensible of the, the, uh, the Omar and all that, but uh, don't you think you're being a bit rough on poor old Gussie there? What? After what happened between him and Stephanie? Ah, well, I was, uh, I was going to talk to you about that. You know... I often think it's as well on these occasions to have a few words with a, a seasoned man of the world and get the real lowdown. I mean, you wouldn't like to have to start wringing your hands later and saying, gosh, if only I'd known. No, I, I think you're wronging, Gussie. Let me explain. There can be no explanation, Bertie. I have blotted Augustus from my life. Gussie? No, 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 no. You see, that's just where you're making your bloomer. I have finished with Augustus. From today, he will be merely a memory. A memory that will grow fainter through the years. With you beside me, I shall be able to exorcise Augustus's spell. Now, I'd better go and tell Daddy to announce our engagement at the ball tonight. No, 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 no! Uh, don't do that. But I must. Otherwise, he's going to announce my engagement to Augustus. No, uh, well, let's leave it till later. Jeeves? Oh, goodness, you're here. Madeline is going to tell her father that we're engaged. It was perhaps only to be expected, sir. Well, what am I going to do, Jeeves? It occurs to me to wonder, sir, that if Miss Bassett were to see for herself the contents of Mr. Finknottle's notebook, it might lend credence to his story of how he came to be grappling with Miss Bing in her bedroom. Well, I did mind, Jeeves, but the blasted Stiffy won't hand it over. I say, Jeeves, I've just had a thought. Do you know Stiffy's room? Yes, sir. Right, Steve, you, you take the wardrobe, I'll deal with the chest of drawers. Jeeves? Uh, sir? No? Did you speak, Jeeves? No, sir. of a tiny little dog, Jeeves. If I may be so bold as to contradict you, sir, the creature seems to me to be above average in muscular development. I would also draw your attention uh, to the number and size of the teeth. Surprised to see us here. No, I'm not. You've been looking for that notebook, I suppose. Oh, why, yes, yes, we have. Uh, though we hadn't really got started. We were somewhat impeded by the bow wow. Uh, he took our entrance in the wrong spirit, mm -hmm. did he, Jeeves? Indeed, he did, sir. A fine watchdog, miss. Yes. Uh, Steffi, uh, would it be too much to ask you to, to uh, attach a stout lead to the little fellow's collar, thus making the world safe for democracy? Yes, it would. 
Wouldn't you want to save the lives of two fellow creatures? No, I wouldn't. Not if they're men. I loathe all men. Oh, come now, Stiffy. Don't you oh, come now, me, Bertie Worcester. Do you know what Harold said? Uh, no, no, I don't, Stiffy. I'd be most interested to learn, of course, so uh, wouldn't we, Jeeves? I burn with curiosity, sir. I feel, however, that I could give the matter livelier attention were I not perched on this wardrobe. Oh, very well. I got to the rectory and I went in and after we talked of this and that for a while, I said, when are you going to pinch Eustace Oates' helmet for me, darling? Eustace Oates? You mean the policeman? Yes. Well, you can't ask respectable curates of the Church of England to go around stealing policemen's helmets. There you are, you see, you're all as bad. That's exactly what he said. So I said, oh, drawing myself up. In that case, our engagement is at an end. And he dropped a whole box of coloured slides from the Holy Land and I came away. You can't mean this, Stiffy. I can. And I consider I've had a very lucky escape. If he's going to refuse me every little thing I ask, then I'm glad I found out in time. Well, this is, this is too bad, Stiffy. The heart bleeds, eh, Jeeves? Distinctly, sir. <laughs> Well, one can only hope that uh, the time, the great healer, will eventually rally round and stitch up the wound. Uh, in the meantime, under the circs, I think we'd better just take the notebook and toddle off to Oh, don't talk to me about notebooks now. Oh, how can you be so heartless? Oh, I wish I were dead. And you'd be sorry then, wouldn't you? <laughs> Come in! Madeline, my dear, what can I do for you? That, that's something I have to do. Bertie Worcester? No! Oh, dear God, Madeline, not that. Look at them, Jeeves. I mean, only last evening, Miss Madeline Bassett lost the love of her life. Only an hour ago, Miss Stephanie Bing, too, was allegedly heartbroken. But now look at them. I mean, are these the actions of rational human beings, Jeeves? It's difficult to say, sir. I mean, is it for this that we dragged ourselves from the primeval ooze to stir up the emotions of simple, honest citizens to the point of frenzy and then go around playing tennis and giggling? It's an interesting question, sir. I say, Stiffy. Oh, hello, Bertie. Well, I must say, you appear to have recovered your spirit in a rather remarkable manner. One tries to keep cheerful, you know. Oh, does one? Does one indeed? Well, in that case, Stiffy, I'll trouble you cheerfully to disgorge Gussie's notebook without any more back chat. Oh, hard jolly hard. Oh, hard jolly hard are you, young Stiffy, with knobs on. And hard jolly hard are you with double knobs on. If I might be permitted to suggest a course of action, sir. What do you mean? You you found a formula, Jeeves? The idea I have, sir, is to take advantage of Sir Watkin Bassett's attitude to you. <clears throat> Sir Watkin does not like you, sir. Well, I don't like him. No, sir, but he would consequently sustain a severe shock were you to inform him that you and Miss Bing were betrothed and anxious to be united in matrimonial bliss. He'd hit the ceiling. Exactly, miss. A very colourful piece of imagery. If you were then to assure your uncle that there was no truth in Mr Worcester's statement, adding that you were, in actual fact, betrothed to Mr. Pinker, I think that the overwhelming relief he would feel at the news would lead him to look with a kindly eye on your betrothal to that gentleman. Why, Jeeves, that's marvellous. It couldn't fail. If I said the chap I really wanted to marry was the boy who cleans the boots, he'd fold me in his arms and promise to come and dance at my wedding after being threatened with Bertie. Jeeves, you really are the specific dream rabbit. Oh, really? Well, I'll take the notebook now, Stiffy. After you've seen Uncle Watkin. I have no intention whatever of seeing Uncle Watkin. Don't you like the scheme? I like the scheme? No, I don't. No. I consider the idea that Jeeves has advanced to mark the absolute zero in human goofiness. The book, Stiffy, if you please. I was rather asking myself if you might not take this attitude. Well, now you know the answer. I have. The book, if you please.
No, I uh, want you to keep a general lookout out. There's always a few gate crashers. I'll keep my eyes peeled, Sir Watkins, sir. Yes, Mr. Worcester. Uh, could I speak to you for a moment, Sir Watkins? Uh, no hurry. Speak to me? Well, if you're really... Uh, yes, uh, all right. Uh, that's about all out, I think. Very good, sir. Watkins, sir. Sir. Now, Mr. Worcester. Uh, yes, well, I, I just wanted to have a bit of a chat. Yes? Have you, uh, have you ever thought about love, Sir Watkins? You didn't come here to discuss love. Uh, well, yes, I have, actually. Uh, I mean, wherever you go, there it is, buzzing along in every class of life. I mean, take Newt, for instance. Are you quite well, Mr. Worcester? No, no, no! <laughs> the big flower arrangements are for the buffet table. Uh, no, I was, uh, I was just quoting Gussie Think Not All, really. Uh, Reva Newt, that is. Uh, and Starfish, too, according to Gussie. Uh, and also ribbon-like seaweed, which is which is a uh, seaweed that sort of looks like ribbon. Anyway, Gussie, Mr. Wooster, will you please come to the point? Oh, uh, right. Uh, well, I just want to say that you will not be losing a niece, but gaining a nephew. Niece, nephew, Stiffy and me, you know. Stiffy, Stephanie. I have the honour to ask for your niece's hand in marriage. But I thought it was my daughter. What was? My daughter distinctly told me that you and she were... Madeline? Oh, no, 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 it's... It's Stiffy, all right. Stephanie, yes. Oh, well, in that case, of course, Mr. Worcester, I'm delighted. I'm sure you and Stephanie will be very happy together. Oh, are you, uh, are you absolutely sure about that, sir? I mean, uh... She'll make something of you, perhaps. I'm sure there are many good qualities underneath that uh, rough exterior. Uh, well, no, actually. Now, if you will excuse me, Mr. Wooster, there are still many things yet to be done. I shall take the greatest pleasure in announcing your engagement to Stephanie at the ball this evening. Ah. What do you mean, we're engaged? He welcomed me with open arms. It was always a danger, of course. But I have no intention in the world of being engaged to you, Bertie Worcester. Well, it's going to be announced tonight. Not if I have anything to do with it, it isn't. <coughs> Parsnips. The bicycles. Yep. Not for the true English... No, no. Uh, not for the true born English one. The blah, 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 blah. The British bicycles. There's <laughs> something. Umbrellas. There's something, 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 something. Uh, the entire expanse of Hertfordshire. Brussels sprouts. Something, 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 something. Oh, Mr. Spode, I was looking for you. Um, yes, what is it, Stephanie? It's about me and Mr. Pinker. Uncle Watkins being terribly mean about him. I was wondering if you could talk to him for me. He does respect your opinion. Oh, yeah. I, I really don't think that I, I can interfere in a, a purely family matter, Stephanie. Oh, yes, of course. I, I understand that, Mr. Spode. But, but I have something you might be interested to see. Oh, really? Like these two. Put them down there, please. What is it? Stiffy, it's me. 
Harold! Can I come in? No, you can't. But I brought you something. Harold, you woolly bar lamb. You hadn't got it after all. Yes. Harold, my dream of joy. You're the most wonderful man in the whole wonderful world. <laughs> Sorry to disturb you, sir. I asked to make a search of all the rooms. An item of police equipment has been stolen. Oh, what fun. In your car. What you buy, sir? Remember, I know all about you, Lily. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh it's, it's, it's you was the... <laughs> nice evening. Well, upon my words, Mo, this is, this is too much. This is just that little bit above the odds that compels a man to take drastic steps. But, but Wooster, this... I must warn you, Spode, that my patience is not inexhaustible. But you don't know the provocation I've had from this Finknottle. He says that I am a pompous ass. Oh. When did Mr. Finknottle say that to you? Because he didn't say it. He wrote it. Look. Yes, um, give me that box, bud. Yes, but I, should, I should like you to have it, Worcester. Then you can see what I mean. Look, look, look what he says there about how I eat asparagus. I'm going to tear your head from off your shoulders. Spoon, control yourself. Sorry, sorry. Are you, you going to keep the book, Worcester? I am. Ah, well... Can I get on with beating this door down? Little? Certainly not. All you do now is pop off. Pop off. Pop off. Leave me, Spode. I would be alone. Yes. Well, uh, yes, thank you, Worcester. Good night. Gussie, your troubles are over. I wish I was in Lincolnshire, Bertie. It's so peaceful in Lincolnshire, Bertie. You can... Oh, never mind about that. I've got your notebook back. Oh, but... Now you sprint along and show it to Madeline and she'll understand why you were so anxious to wrest it from Stiffy's handbag. Will she, Bertie? Will she? She will, she will. Now go. Gussie, how could you? Well, it's true. He has got hair going out of his ears. Shall we take the poultry and roast beef up to the buffet tent now, Miss Madeline? Oh, yes. The guests will start arriving soon for dinner. But you see what I had to get the book back from Stephanie. Gussie, you are so foolish sometimes. But I suppose I can be foolish too. Do you know what that blasted Finknottle has done? Mr. Finknottle is here, Daddy. You. you. you goggle eyed idiot! You filled me bath up with newts! I know that. Oh my gosh, you haven't touched them, have you? I'm in the middle of a most important experiment. Touch them? I've pulled the plug on the beastly things! I'm not going to share my bath with a lot of slimy amphibians! You Silly old ass! You unmitigated pudding headed old jobber now! If it wasn't for the awful threat of Lifelong union to Stiffy Bing, Jeeves. I should be quite looking forward to this thrash. An unlooked-for betrothal often casts a pall, sir. Oh, Bertie! Bertie, it's all off again! What is? The marriage, of course! Well, well, I didn't know it was on. I'm rather losing track of your vagaries, Gussie. Uh, didn't you show Madeline the notebook? Yes, that was all right. Then I had a row with her father. Oh, and, uh, what about? Well, I broke one of the tanks in my room and had to put a few newts in his bath. In his bath? He didn't like it. He pulled the plug out. And? Well, I ticked him off properly. Called him every name I could think of. In fact, I called him names I hadn't a notion I knew. 
And when I finally poured for breath, he forbade the bands and I gave him the notebook. You gave him the notebook? Yes, just as he was leaving. Thought there might be some names in it which I'd forgotten to call him. What's the matter, Bertie? Well, can't you see what you've done, you poor old chump? If old Bassett has read the contents of that notebook, then, then nothing will bring him round. I mean, words spoken in anger you might have got away with, but coldly considered opinions inscribed day by day in a notebook, well, that's another matter. Oh, my lord. Jeez, what shall I do? Um, am I to gather that Sir Watkin was about to bathe when he found your little creatures in his bath, sir? Oh, yes, I suppose so. He had his dressing gown on. It is possible, then, that Sir Watkin has not yet read the contents of the notebook, that he has set it aside as something to look forward to after he has completed his ablutions. By George, you are absolutely right. All you have to do, Gussie, is to nip into his room and pitch the notebook while he's in the bath. Stephanie. I don't think he's come down yet. <laughs> what? Did you see that big rotter come this way? Fink, knocker, dressed up as the devil. No one hasn't come this way, Sir Watkins, sir. Watkin, I've been looking for you. The guests are wondering where you are. Did you see that fink knocker as you came up? No. Blast it. Well, what are you doing up here anyway? Searching, Sir Watkins, sir. Searching? Someone has stolen my helmet. Stolen your helmet? Correct, Sir Watkins, sir. Oh, I know who's got that. Bertie Worcester. Then ho for the festivities, Jeeves. Well, I must say, Jeeves, if there is a dash to be cut tonight, your employer will be the one who is cutting it. I hope that Sir Watkins' announcement of your nuptials will in no way tarnish your enjoyment, sir. I was trying to blot that out of my memory, Jeeves. Is the prisoner not to be allowed a few brief moments of forgetfulness before execution takes place? I'm sorry, sir. It was thoughtless of me. No matter, Jeeves. We Worcesters are known for our insouciance in the face of fearful odds. Uh, my cigarette case, if you please. Oh, the lighter, if it's there. Is something amiss, Jeeves? Sir? You appear to be preoccupied. Yes, sir. I have discovered that there is a policeman's helmet concealed in our wardrobe. We have come for a search your room, my man. Oh. Ah! What ho, Sir Watkin? Kindly do not address me in that familiar way, Worcester. I happen to know that once again you're yielded to the awful temptation to steal a policeman's helmet. Oh, rot! The constable and I have received specific information from an eyewitness. He will proceed, therefore, to search your room without delay. Very well. If that is the spirit in which you interpret your duties as a host, carry on. All I can say is don't count on me coming back here. Right. to the production of turnips. I can't hear Mr. Spode talking about Brussels sprouts. It's changed my life, I can tell you. Frank Knattel! thinks I'm cross with him, but I was so impressed by the way he stood up to my father. Augustus is such a strong man, 
strong and silent will. He's got it somewhere, Sir Watkins, sir. I swear. It appears I owe you an apology, Mr. Wooster. Sir W. Bassett, you never spoke a true word. I came here to your house as a guest, in good faith. And I have been subjected to intolerable abuse. My goods and chattels have been violated. Is this the way you welcome guests in Gloucestershire? Hmm? 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 I mean, is, is this the treatment to which free-born, right-thinking Englishmen are to be subjected? No, I say. Now, since time immemorial, it has been truly said that Britons never, never, never shall be slaves. And yet, and yet, my friends, today innocent Britons may be invited to seemingly respectable country houses for the weekend and used most vilely. Uh, on the other hand, I must take too harsh a view. Um, a lot to be said on both sides, I'm sure. I arrest you, Bertram Worcester, on a charge of theft of police equipment, namely helmets, police constable, size seven and three quarters, one half. I knew it. I knew it. Didn't I say? I to think I was about to announce his engagement to my ward. You blackguard! Steady. <laughs> still here, thanks to you, young stiffy. Oh, don't be such a cross patch. It all worked out perfectly. As you turned to crime again, Uncle Watkin decided that even Harold was a better bet for his favourite niece. We're reading the bands this morning. Thanks, old man. Well, that's all very well, but... Got to go now, Bertie. Spoons, eh? Just one word, sir. Now, what is it? The one word, sir, is Eulalie. You're free to go now. Free? Did you pay my bail? No, Chief said all the charges have been dropped. Oh, uh, what though? Yeah. Carry on, men. Doing here, I was uh, I distinctly told Oates to Ah, uh, Roderick, on your way to Minchinhampton? Uh, well, uh, well, no. Uh, the fact is, I hear there's been some trouble about the helmet I stole from Constable Oates. You, Roderick? A silly thing to do. I see that now. It was an uncontrollable impulse. I yielded. You yielded, Roderick? I did it once at Oxford, too. Good God above. I know. I was going to keep quiet about it, but Worcester's man tells me that you've got the idea that Worcester did it, so of course I had to come and tell you. I'll go back to London, I think. Perhaps it would be best in the circumstances. Well, it appears I 
Oh, you would apologize, Mr. Wooster. Say no more about it, Bassett. My innocence is established. That's all that matters. I take it that I'm now free to leave. Certainly, certainly. Goodbye, Mr. Wooster. And not so fast. I'll trouble you for that notebook of Mr. Fingnottles first. Oh, certainly not. That is evidence, Mr. Wooster. Very well, Sir Watkin. Then in tomorrow's times, you can read the announcement of my forthcoming marriage to your daughter Madeline. You wouldn't. I dashed well would. That's below the belt, Worcester. Thank you. Goodbye, Bassett. I need scarcely say, I think, that I hope this will be a lesson to you. You really again, Jeeves? Indeed, sir. Yeah, dashed useful word, that. Uh, there isn't anyone else I could use it on, is there? I regret not, sir. Gussie, we are going to burn this traffic notebook of yours. Took me ages to think of all those things. Yes, we will now forget them again. All right. Then I beseech you, Gussie, never, ever, ever to write derogatory things about your elders and betters again. No, Bertie. Now, give the notebook a poke, Barmy. I don't know what I'm going to do, Bertie. I can't go back to Totley. Oh, never mind, Gussie. Madeline adores you. Love will find a way. No, it's my newts I'm worried about. I mean, will she send them on to me? Have you ever been to Gussie's place in Lincolnshire? No, what's it like? Oh, a lot of newts. Uh. Good Lord! It's spoon! That doesn't suit him, does it? Well, sir, seeing that you have discovered part of the matter for yourself, I feel at liberty to disclose the rest of Mr. Spode's secret. Mr. Spode designs ladies' underclothing, sir. He has a considerable talent in that direction and has indulged it secretly for some years. He is the proprietor and founder of that emporium, Eulalie Sirs, that you chanced across. Good Lord! Well, no wonder he didn't want it to come out. No, sir. It would undoubtedly jeopardize his authority amongst his followers. Yes, you can't be a successful dictator and design women's underclothing. <laughs> no, sir. One or the other, not both. Precisely, sir. You know, Jeeves, in spite of Roderick Spode's somewhat idiosyncratic ways, he's undoubtedly a severe menace to man and beast. I'm sure that is so, sir. And you saved me from him, Jeeves. Instead of being beaten to a jelly by this maniac, I sit before you now, the same perfectly formed fellow I was before. Jeeves! You may get rid of those handkerchiefs. I owe it to you. Thank you, sir. I destroyed them last night. Did you buy Jove? Well, very good then, Jeeves. Chin-chin. Your very good health, sir. Ah. 